Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to introduce someone very special. From organizing some of the largest parties in New York City and all over the world to surviving fire festival. Won't go that far, I'm sure, but he is the ultimate team player. His name is Andy King. Welcome to Take Two with Andy King. Take two with Andy King. And today I'm excited to introduce Carter Howe. A total inspiration. Carter, how's it going? Really good. How are you doing, Andy? Well, I'm psyched that spring is here and um, got my fac- first vaccine shot. So we're on our way. And I'm really looking forward to having COVID in the rearview mirror. How about you? I completely agree. And it's perfect timing with spring, at least on the East Coast. And I have my vax shot coming up in two weeks. So good, good energy everywhere. Very you got and- you got to have it. And obviously, Carter, yeah. you know, here I am a big event planner and you can imagine there are no events and corporations yeah. can't take that risk. So we're doing this cool, you probably read about it. It's we're calling it like a party in a box, but we're doing these oh, cocktail, okay. cocktail kits. And um, so uh, corporations, you know, they have Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting and everybody just wants to kill themselves after a while. It's so boring, right? So we've got- <laughs> everyone's, only, everyone's only looking at themselves well, in the little box. Well, I know. Zoom. Then someone showed me recently, I don't know, it must have been on Facebook or I don't know, where like some woman was having sex with her husband like on a Zoom call and like- On did, mute? on mute i think she was on, on mute, mute but she was all over the place i'm like <laughs> i mean how do you do that what do you i don't know yeah. is that a little bit There's odd so, um, so many hours in the day and you choose yeah you choose one hour this one zoom call really <laughs> oh my word okay so carter tell our audience about carter Howe and your journey right now give us a little quick picture i obviously am completely inspired by who you are and what you're doing and what you're up to. And I think that you are a trailblazer and everything you're doing is going to be very inspirational to a lot of young people in your shoes. So Carter, give us a little quick pick here. Um, thank you. So I, I'm 23 and I'm from Boston, Mass, and I'm a photographer um, and a model um, kind of between New York and LA. And I basically kind of came out as transmasculine. I'm transmasculine, so um, for people who that for people who might not know, what that means is that I kind of identify more masculinely on a on a non-binary scale. Um, I use he and he he and him pronouns, um, and yeah, so I kind of came out in this past uh, year, 20, 2020, and have been working I work mostly in music and I have been working mostly in music um over the last few years and I've just kind of been able to take in a lot of the creativity that's around me inherently through music and and photography and um learn a lot about it while also kind of talking more about my experience as a trans person in a very kind of cis industry. With COVID I've been doing a lot of virtual chats and i actually had billy eilish's team reach out to me and um and they're like andy will you just jump on a zoom call it's our usual you know friday afternoon happy hour call but we're just trying to keep the troops like smiling and happy like everybody's just yeah. spiraling and there there are no concerts there's no world tours there's nothing we're laying off people left and right can you kind of inspire them and just make them laugh a little bit and it's interesting because you may remember, Carter, did you see I hosted like the world's largest virtual music festival last May? Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Wait. So you go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll just real quick. And so it literally um, was on Trap Nation and Chill Nation. I had over 109 artists participate and I raised like, I don't know, was it 150 grand or something, maybe a little bit more for Sweet Relief, which is a cool charity that uh, Mark Ruffalo set up, I'm pretty sure, to help musicians right now who have no income and feeding America, uh, all everybody going hungry and, and Leonardo DiCaprio and Lorraine Powell Jobs, Steve Jobs' widow, founded the um, yeah. uh, that charity. So anyway, yeah. it was kind of fun to be able to raise a lot of money, but I got to know all these cool young artists. It was amazing. Yeah. Did you tune in yeah. a little bit? Well, okay. So yes, I did. It was the very beginning of quarantine and everyone was feeling very antsy. 
Um, but one of my main clients, I was touring, uh, I was a touring photographer before COVID um, struck. And uh, one of the main people that I was touring with is Carl Garsbo, who goes by Casbo. And he was one of the headliners on that. Oh my gosh, um, yes. On that festival. So I was watching Carl go as he was DJing, DJing in, um, from Gothenburg. Or Stockholm. I can't remember where he was. I think Stockholm. Yeah, but he's Stockholm. Yeah, he's he's one of my best friends, and um, he is just a joy to work with. And so when I saw that, <laughs> well, I saw that he was playing that festival before I saw that you were hosting it. When I saw that <laughs> the two of you were going, I was like, "Whoa! This is a crash. This is a clash of um, cultures, of my worlds." But yeah, a clash of cultures. But it was, um, yeah, that was a really that was a really interesting uh, little little break from the mundane uh lockdown was it down but one of the but <laughs> many <I>, rave <laughs> but the, if the but one of the main reasons for bringing it up though carter is that like i was psyched to be able to talk to so many of the performers so many of the artists and say like what are you guys doing right now they're like well we're going crazy i'm like trust me take this time you may never have this free time ever again in your <laughs> lives Take this time, even if you have to live on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but make yeah. cool music. Use this time where your emotions are flowing and write cool music and, and perform at home and just get your, get your creative juices flowing. And I feel like that's kind yeah. of what happened. I mean, I don't know. I Like Justin Bieber's new album. I, or do they call them albums anymore? I don't know what you call them. But, Records? Um, yeah, I don't know. His, I love his music right now, which is amazing. I mean... I, just, I could go down a list of a lot of incredible music I think has been created during COVID. So I'll yeah, bet yeah. too, like you, it's also the flip side, which is like the world has had a lot of time to think, right? And a lot of time to reflect on like, who am I? Where am mm -hmm. I going? Why haven't I made a change? Yeah. Like what? So, <laughs> oh my word. So Carter, is there one big yeah. thing that like catapulted you? catapulted you into change mode into like i'm finally doing it i'm gonna make this happen do you remember when you just said i've gotten to the point i'm doing it i think it was definitely a culmination of things that were kind of bubbling before before covid actually like lockdown actually happened but i think it was a lot of different relationships and friends and people and ideas that uh had gone completely unaddressed for so long that that finally when I was alone in March um I mean everybody was locked down I was like oh wait can I swear or no yes of course <laughs> um I was like holy shit this stuff has to be dealt with right away and like it's just me and you know the family that I was quarantining with and it's got to be dealt with now and so um yeah it was definitely it felt a little bit like a, of a mental boot camp in a lot of ways because it was just like so much so much kind of internal dialogue that hadn't really happened and I hadn't allowed myself to ha to have for 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 several years um and I think that probably I think I feel like a lot of people might be able to relate to that just in terms of whether regardless of what regardless of what the kind of challenges might be but having that vacuum space where you're just completely isolated and allow it's really whether or not you allow yourself to be vulnerable with yourself in that in that time and I think that the people who really grew out of covid were the ones who were vulnerable with themselves um, and do you think, Carter, yeah. like, was it a huge flow of emotions that just started to come over you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was. Okay. So basically I, I can kind of, pin, I mean, there's so many, many micro moments, completely overwhelmed with emotion and, and, and confusion and uncertainty. But I think one of the biggest moments, one of the biggest like clicks that happened was I was listening to, um, I was listening to a podcast called Gender Reveal um, back in, I think it was early April. Um, and uh, Cyrus Simonoff is um, a writer. He's a transmasculine writer in LA. I think he's, I think he's actually um, 
I think he's a sibling or the brother of um, Lena Dunham, but he was on, he's an incredible writer and um, very like really easy to listen to. And I, and I remember being in this space where I was like, oh God, I'm going to listen to another gender podcast because I don't know what's going on in my brain. <laughs> like, I was like, oh God, like <laughs> here's another thing that I got to, you know, be vulnerable with myself about. And I remember listening to him and he was describing these really intense and specific things that uh, basically describe gender euphoria for him. And, you know, the first moments of, you know, for for us, it was like cutting our hair and then, you know, wearing more masculine clothes. For me, it was like wearing masculine clothes and like uh, looking at myself in the mirror and, you know, having these thoughts like, oh, okay, I might want to tell people that there's something going on and having those thoughts all lead up when you first experience gender euphoria for the first time in your life for me it was after 22 years and for people who don't know gender euphoria is it's basically when your brain and your body are aligned um in a way that makes you feel completely whole and you you feel you have this rush of serotonin and like dopamine in your brain because there's always been a little bit, if you have gender dysphoria, which is the opposite, um, when there's a disconnect between what you see in the mirror and what you envision in your brain, when that is um, kind of righted or aligned for the first time, your brain goes, whoa, like, holy shit. It's like, it, and I remember having all these experiences and listening to Cyrus talk and be like, holy shit, that is, that's exactly what, what I'm going through. And, and basically he said, you have these feelings where you actually feel like you're on Molly for about three days or more, you know, for a week. And I remember that the time that I was listening to him talk about that was that exact week that it was happening. To wow. me. Um, and you feel like you want to cry. You're like crying all the time, but it's not sad crying. It's more euphoric crying and 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 like you feel like seven years old again and you're like oh my god oh my god I, I need to tell everybody I need to I need to do this I need to there's so much that that needs to be um addressed that I've never you know there's so much that needs to be explored um and I remember simultaneously feeling so ecstatic that I had found at least a feeling that I was uh, like aligning with um, but also kind of this feeling of dread where I was just in a space where I was thinking, oh man, <laughs> this is what has been going on. <laughs> this is what has been going on for 22 years. And that's, that's a big, that's a lot. It's a lot to, to, to realize in a bubble in quarantine. For um, sure. Gosh. And Carter, it's, it's yeah. amazing for me. I mean, when I think back, you know, I didn't come out until I was 35 years old. And it was a real journey because I just thought, and I think you and I have a lot of similarities. Like I struggle. I mean, when I rose to fame because of fire, one of the first things that happened was every other little funny city across the country was reaching out to have me be, you know, one of the chairs or one of the, I don't know what you call them for their gay pride parades. One of their big yeah. figureheads or something. And unfortunately, you know, I've never been a big flag waver and I've never been, I, I, I don't want to drive it down people's throats. Like I just happen to be exactly. gay. And, um, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, just yeah I'm not like, I'm, I, I'm not <laughs> going to go to 400 parades. I'm not going to scream at people and ask for equality or I just walk in the room just like everybody else. Cause guess what? We're all the same right. really. And, right. you know, some people are more fortunate. Some people are fat. Some are skinny. Some are different colors. I don't, you know, I, I, we're all the same on this planet pretty much. And so the funny thing is, is that I finally came out, but very subtly. And everybody's like, so, well, who did you come out to? I'm like, I don't remember. I don't know. I, I you know, my father already passed away. Um, my mom mm -hmm. always kept saying, geez, you know, when are you going to settle down? All these beautiful girlfriends and when are you going to say, I'm like, yeah, someday, someday. And then finally, I just, right. um, I think that maybe I brought a, a guy home for the weekend or something. And it slowly started to sink in of what was going on. But my power 
what my oldest brother taught me was interesting. He just said, Andy, you know, you come from a country club.